Hi everyone. So uh, today I'm going to be making the um, binder for my mixed media morsels and I told a few of you that I would definitely film when I decided to make this binder. This is the one that's going to use the Tim Holtz uh, two ring mechanism uh, inside. And um, the first thing I'm going to do, um, well, actually, I already did the first thing, <laughs> which is uh, measured out after I got all of the uh, edges straight, the top and bottom edges straight. I um, I measured out where I want the the flaps, the covers to come out to, and it's important to to do this, and I'm going to show you why. This is a just a little mock-up of my the size of my mixed media morsels pages. And I wanted to show you when you have pages in a binder, well, let me start by saying, um, if you have pages sewn in, your pages are gonna go all the way back to the back of the spine, okay? They're gonna literally touch back there. And so when your book is closed, your pages are right up next to the to the spine and they pretty much pretty much stay in the same place, pretty much. When you have a binder mechanism, your pages extend out the width of the ring. And so I'm going to pretend like this is attached here. So what I'm saying is that when the when the binder is closed, the pages go forward, go out this way just a little bit. So you don't want to cut these too short because your pages will come out and extend past the covers if you do that. So what I did was I just put this little piece of paper that's the same size as my morsel pages and I just kind of held it out. I know it's hard for you to see what I'm doing here. I just kind of held it out like this where it was all the way out of the extent of the rings. And that showed me when it was closed you know, about how far I needed to come out past the edge of the page. So you just kind of have to feel that out for yourself in your situation, but that's what I did. And uh, so now I'm ready to attach the rings to the inside of the spine here. So I'm just gonna place the um, the rings inside the spine and pretty much center it and then I'm just gonna draw a, a mark inside the holes here so I know where to punch it I'm using my crocodile because it's really great for going through uh, a lot of thicknesses. And there's one. Ooh, you know what? I was going to do the smaller hole. Darn it. I'll go ahead and do that on this side. I think I'll just put a little piece of, because um, that is a larger hole, I don't really want a lot of movement. Um, so I'm going to put a little piece of um, duct tape over the hole and just punch it again and see if that hopefully will help. Right, so I'm just covering the hole here. And then I'll just punch it again. The small one. It may not help a whole lot, but if it helps some, it'll keep it from moving around. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so then all we do is um, use the brads that came with the uh, binder ring. And put it in there. Flatten it out. Okay. Now, <clears throat> to make this a little bit more secure, I'm going to use a piece of duct tape across the entire uh, uh, spine just to help the tape will hold down these prongs and hopefully keep it from coming undone. Not quite right. Let me get that straighter. Still not straight. It's hard to do when you can't see it <clears throat> where the uh, spine is. And that's better. All right. So I'm pressing it in and um, pressing it down really good where those uh, prongs are. Okay. That just gives that something to hold on to so that hopefully it doesn't come loose. I think I'll trim this off a little and then just fold it over to help give some more stability even to the spine. Let's see. I don't want it to go over the fold here though, really because I don't want it to be too thick there where it won't where the covers won't close and open properly. I am going to use some thinner tape to run along these folds though. I'm gonna use some regular masking tape and just put that right across the, uh, the fold just to reinforce it a little bit. But it's thin enough that it'll, <clears throat> it'll fold open and close better, better than with the duct tape in there. So as you can see, this was a granola bar box, and uh, the, the, the spine portion is doubled because of the way the box was glued together originally. So that's a double layer there, and this is only a single layer here. So I took an additional granola bar box and cut some panels that are going to fit Right in here, we're gonna cut this piece off and then these will be glued and adhered right inside these covers to make them nice and sturdy. Just like that, okay? I may put this side to the inside just so when I get ready to cover it, it'll, it'll already be solid. Okay, so I'm gonna just go trim this off and uh, be back in a second. All right, so this is gonna be the actual size of my binder for my mixed media morsels. Okay. So now I'm gonna glue these in. I cut these pieces just a little bit shorter 
than the uh, where the fold is going to be so that there's room for it to fold and this piece won't get in the way and cause any problems so cut just a little bit extra maybe a uh, an eighth of an inch off sixteenth of an inch maybe between between those two all right <clears throat> So I'm going to use some um, um, I don't know if I want to use this or if I want to use the maybe I want to use the other this is that uh, like score tape but it's a cheaper brand it's the same stuff though so I got this at um, Amazon so if you're looking for some score tape heavy-duty Take. Um, this is a good brand. I've, I've found it to be just the same as the score tape and um, like I said it's less expensive. You can use that or you can um, or you can use the red line tape too is really good one. Um, this is a very narrow one but you can buy the wider versions of that as well. So I'm just going to use this to um, Stick these panels on. And you can also just glue these on too, by the way. You don't have to have this tape. <clears throat> this just makes it um, quicker because you don't have to wait for the glue to dry. So I've attached the uh, extra piece inside uh, the front and the back cover. So that's all secured down now. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to just go ahead and paint the outside of the covers got some black paint here is the labels that I used on the first uh, little little mini album so I'm going to use those again on this so I can keep it with the same look and the same feel although I think this time I might go horizontally across instead of vertically like I did because this one was so little I did the vertical but I'm going to go horizontal I think on this one and uh, that'll be fun So all the labels are on and oops he got an extra here oops <laughs> pull up the black paint with that one 
because of that slick tape, but that's all going to be covered up. However, I'm going to put a little bit more black paint there just because I want to make sure that there's a that that blue tape is covered up. Hmm. Although, if it's going to come off that easily, that means the tape will stick to the paint, which could make it come up. So I think it might have been a mistake to put that there. Let's see if I can scrape it off. It scrapes off so easily. Maybe it'll just come off. All right, I'll, I'll figure that out and be back in a second. All right, so I took a little sanding block and and went along the edges carefully and got uh, most of that off. I, I didn't want to scrape it off of the uh, the book cover itself, so I left some of that, those straggly pieces. <coughs> but I think I got enough of it off that the tape will do fine now. All right, so the next step that I'm gonna do um, is put some Mod Podge on. So I have the book binding tape and I'm just measuring out where I need to cut. Got some really sticky tape. Anyway, it's cloth and it's um, it's called book repair tape and I got it at Amazon. So it's made specifically for the binding of a book. And I wanted it because it was uh, I didn't really care for the shiny look of the duct tape and I didn't want to paint it because I had a feeling it would do exactly what I did here on the edges. So I decided I wanted to go ahead and go with the cloth and I think it's going to be just fine. See, it's not quite going as far as the blue did. See what I mean? Showing a little bit of the edge there. So that's going to be the back side, so I may just have to put some paint or something there. Alright, so that's down and the book is closing fine. Okay, now I need to fold this in, but I only need a little bit like I did the blue one. It might be that putting a little paint there now will be okay because it's such a small, tiny area that I doubt it would get scratched. <laughs> I think I'll do that just for, for now. Um, wait, here it is. And um, the little tiny brush, and we'll just see. We'll see if it lasts. Already looking better, look at that. <laughs> Looks good. 